That's the sun, and then the, the planets go around like this in an elliptical course, and depending on uh, the interaction of all the planets, it's either elongated or more round. Or you got all the planets like this in the solar system. Well, actually, that is absolutely incorrect. Um, the solar system does not behave that way at all. In fact, the solar system uh, uh, it behaves in a completely different way since the sun is moving through space and the planets are flying around the sun generating this huge vortices as it follows the equator of the sun. It, that is a completely different picture. All right, it goes from flat to spacious, to movement through space. And that makes a big difference. All of a sudden, you start to see that even planetary motions, solar motions around the galaxy, galactic motions, supercluster motions, and so on, all have this elliptical, vorticular dynamics of space. They all have this torque dynamic through space. And, uh, and if you look at the Earth on this vortex, you could say that this is 2000, you know, 2000 for instance, and this would be then uh, 2000, 2001, and then this would be 2002. And this would be, uh, this is extremely long distance apart millions and millions and millions and millions of miles apart. There's nothing in there, the, the, you know, the planets do not come back onto their path. They don't. If they did, we most likely would have the same set of information over and over and over like a broken record. Alright, I'll put this as simply as I can. Everybody on Earth is dead in a year. And let me explain why. Wrapped around the Earth is an invisible field of energy. It's made up of uh, electricity and magnetism, so it's called, creatively enough, the electromagnetic field. It's where we get our magnetic North Pole and South Pole, and it protects us from cosmic radiation. So this EM field is our friend. But now, but now, that field is falling apart. Why? Uh, why? Uh, quick and dirty. The thin skin, that's the Earth's crust. That's what we live on. It's 30 miles thick. The meat here, call it the mantle. I'm forgetting all the, the funky transitions, it's uh, 2,000 miles thick. The core, the peach pit in the center, that's a tricky one. There's two parts, the inner core and the outer core. You following me? The inner core is, uh, it's a big solid chunk of iron, we think. And that's surrounded by the outer core, and that is liquid. Yes, but most importantly, this liquid is constantly spinning in one direction. So a trillion, trillion tons of hot metal spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So. Right, so physics 101, hot metal moving fast makes an electromagnetic field. The spinning liquid outer core is the engine that drives the EM field. And that's where we have our problem. This engine has stalled. The core of the Earth has stopped spinning. How could this have happened? We don't know. Basically what this article is stating is that water is contained within certain minerals within the earth and deep down in the core of the earth due to extreme pressures and temperatures that there is a chemical reaction that is occurring due to this water being within these certain minerals and it is creating iron peroxide. It goes on to say that 300 million tons of water is carried down into the Earth's interior every year.
Finding the existence of a giant internal oxygen reservoir has many far-reaching implications. Now we should reconsider the consequences of sporadic oxygen outbursts and their correlation to other major events in the Earth's history. What's the timeline here? As the EM field becomes more and more unstable, we'll start seeing isolated incidents. One plane will fall from the sky, and then two, and then... months anything everything electronic will be fried static discharges in the atmosphere will create superstorms Superstorms with hundreds of lightning strikes per square mile. So when we add torque to space-time, the solution gives us a very different picture than a perfect sphere. It generates a torus structure, okay, which is a sphere with two holes in the middle at the north and south pole. And because it has Coriolis forces, Coriolis forces are the forces that makes water rotate in one direction in the north hemisphere and in the other in the south hemisphere that makes hurricanes rotate in the opposite direction um, that makes uh, plasma dynamics on the sun rotate in the opposite direction because Coriolis forces were added to the equation so what we did is we added a term for torque and the Coriolis forces as a secondary uh, rank uh, tensor on the space-time manifold we, re, the result is a double torus structure, a double torus manifold that has this dynamic, uh, which is uh, viewed here from above uh, as uh, a rotating uh, yin-yang sign, if you'd like.
So why are we seeing these toroidal spectra in our skies? Thank you for watching and much love to you all.